This is Doug Caldwell, University of Florida, Collier County Extension. It's May 23rd. We're under the canopy of a beautiful shady lady black olive tree, otherwise known as Bucida buceris. This is my favorite shady lady black olive tree in all of South Florida. This species has a unique form, probably no other tree has it, that you can use a horizontal, fine textured combination from one species. This tree is also planted in a great location so it can sprawl out and show its true character. The other thing I like about this tree is the branching. You've got these gnarly branches growing the wrong way at right angles, crossing branches, which should have been taken care of earlier, but it still holds together really well. It's a beautiful spreading champion tree. We're looking at a healthy shady lady black olive, but Where's the black olives? This does not make black olives. You can see the fruits, dry, little flask-like shaped. Not anything I'd want on my salad. We have samples from several Bucida trees. On my left is the Shady Lady, where the leaves are closer together. You can see the nice whorl that they emerge from. On my right, another Bucida. The leaves are much larger, darker green, more blunt shaped. There's even another type where the leaves are larger. But we're looking at the Shady Lady as an attractive ornamental. And unfortunately, every once in a while it's bothered by this caterpillar that we're going to talk about. Now let's go look at a Shady Lady beside a tree that's under attack by caterpillars. Now what's causing all this staining? We have two beside trees here, beside one another. Here's one that has no staining. Here's one with severe staining. So if you look at the sidewalk, no staining, severe staining. Why is that? Let's take a look in the canopies. The one to my right, there's no galls. The one to the left, severe galling. The string bean galls caused by a tiny area of and mite. and you can see there's some strange structures growing out of this plant. They look like string beans. These are galls that originate from the flower or the fruit and these are caused by tiny little mites called areophyid mites. These mites are so small you could probably put 30 to 50 of them on the head of a pen. But they attack the flower when it's real small and they deform its growth. So you can see You've got some straight, some curly. They go from four to six inches in length. And what happens next is a little known fact, but the Bucida caterpillar moves into these galls and goes from an external feeding type caterpillar into a boring type caterpillar. It feeds inside these galls and causes a lot of frass, which drops from the tree and causes a stain on the sidewalks. We've opened up one of these string bean galls and you can see the great accumulation of frass inside and here's one of the caterpillars. And he's running for a uh, high ground. The second generation moth of the caterpillar lays its eggs on the gall and the caterpillars tunnel into the galls. They're a bore inside the galls. It's a frass that's inside the galls raining down on the sidewalk that causes the staining. No galls, no staining. Galls, staining. There's a stark difference in some of these tree canopies in the amount of damage. This one tree is 50% browned out, the tree behind it. They're just starting or else it's a light population on the, on the top and the tips of the branches. And then over here on the right, they're just uh, pretty much gone, 100% brown, and defoliating severely. That's a lot of leaves missing from the canopy. What can you do, or should you do anything? In the past, landscapers have pretty much let the caterpillars go and do their thing because the trees refoliate so rapidly. 
If you have a staining issue, complaints about caterpillars dangling in people's faces, and you want to make a pesticide application, your window of control is when the trees are in flower. And that's when the caterpillars are small and feeding on the petals of the tiny flowers. That's when you would make your application. I've not seen bees flower around these flowers, so spraying should not be an issue with bees. Products you could choose from include some soft pesticides such as BT, which is specifically for caterpillars, or another product called spinosad, again, which is primarily for caterpillars. Or if you want to go with a little harsher chemical, it gives you more residue. One of the synthetic pyrethroids, uh, such as bifenthrin, would be a good choice as well. This is Doug Caldwell helping you beautify your landscape and protect the environment.